From floating villages on the water to self-declared sovereign states, here are 10 of the strangest places to live. Number 10. Al Hajara, Yemen. Located in the Arab country of Yemen, Al Hajara is an ancient village that's built high in the Haraz Mountains. Once upon a time, Al Hajara was an important market town relying upon a somewhat frequented trade route. Nowadays, it is used as a sort of base camp for trekkers and it is a producer of pepper, but it's no longer an economic hub of any kind. It could be said that it's worthy of being a bit of a tourist attraction. With dozens of towering buildings all clustered together that reach far into the sky and set on the edge of a number of cliffs, Al Hajara is not the kind of place that anyone who's afraid of heights is going to want to visit. That said, even despite being built up on a beautifully tall face of rock, this Middle Eastern village would be a dream for a mountain climber or a history buff. Number 9. UFO Houses, Taiwan The UFO houses of the Sanji Resort in Taiwan were built in 1978. The houses had an odd but economical pod-shaped design. They were originally intended to be used as a vacationing resort and were situated on the coast of their home country. At first, the UFO houses were marketed toward United States military officers. The project neared completion but began to lose funding as a series of odd and ominous happenings began as construction took place. Car accidents seemed to happen again and again as the workers tried to build the UFO houses and numerous suicides occurred as well. These occurrences caused rumors to spring up surrounding the odd-shaped housing development. It was believed that the houses were being built on an old burial ground for Dutch soldiers. Eventually, the project was abandoned, although the somewhat sinister reputation of the UFO houses and their weird design led them to become something of a tourist attraction for a time. They became semi-famous abroad and especially in the West. Despite this, the houses were destroyed in the later half of 2008 and a water park was set to be constructed on the land instead. Which begs the question, do you think the new tourist attraction will still be cursed by mysterious happenings seeing that it's still being built on a burial ground? I'm not sure, but I haven't heard of any haunted water parks. I guess we'll see. Number 8. Toshirojima, Japan Toshirojima is a small island that sits in the Pacific Ocean, just off the coast of Ishinomaki, Japan. The small landmass is inhabited, although the population of the residents that live there is quite small. You may not think this is that special or strange, but this island is run by cats. At one point, over 1,000 people lived on Toshirojima. Nowadays, only around 100 or less citizens remain there. The island has been classified as a terminal village thanks to over 50% of its people being over the age of 65. It is in serious danger of ceasing to have any kind of population at all within the next few decades. Because of this, and due to a local belief that feeding and embracing cats will lead to good luck and fortune, the cat population of the island now exceeds the human headcount. There are cat shrines dedicated to the feline population of Tashirojima on the island, which now outnumbers the human population by a ratio of 6 to 1. It might be more by now. If you're allergic to cats, this is not the place for you. Or if you love dogs, because dogs are not allowed here. For people who love cats, though, this might just be heaven. Number 7. Lilydale, New York Lilydale is a very small hamlet that's located in the town of Pomfret, New York, just off to the eastern side of Casadaga Lake. Just an hour or so away from Buffalo and halfway to the Pennsylvania border, Lilydale is in a perfect position to be a tourist attraction. Only about 275 people actually live in Lilydale year-long. However, over 22,000 visitors visit the small village each and every year. The reason that this small and seemingly unimportant town is so good at drawing in tourists is definitely a unique one. Lilydale is considered a capital for the spiritual world. Self-proclaimed psychics and mediums from across the U.S. have flocked to the small town and call it home. The visitors that come to the town are actually being drawn in for just the same reason. The unique citizens of Lilydale hold numerous demonstrations, workshops, classes, lectures, and private services for those wishing to get in contact with the unseen world. Pretty cool, huh? Or spooky, depending on how you look at it. If you're afraid of what might be hiding in your closet or under your bed, or if you think anything that's not backed up by modern science is just a load of hooey, then this place is not for you. Number 6. Tonle Sap, Cambodia Near Siem Reap in Cambodia, there are floating villages of people who live on barges that are lashed together with ropes. Now a large tourist attraction, people actually live here. While it might be beautiful, life is tough. 
Most of the villagers live from fishing, and it's not easy living life on the water. Nearly 80,000 people live here spread over 170 floating villages. The life expectancy of a fisherman is 54 years old, and sometimes they never return from their weekly fishing trip. There is famine and malnourishment with little medical care on the water, and there are even orphanages who take care of the children whose parents never come back. Every errand is run by boat, and there are many floating markets selling vegetables and other groceries. There are even gas stations and basketball courts floating around. And don't forget the karaoke. If you want to have a good time, just paddle out to the nearest floating karaoke bar. Number 5. Raynham Hall, Norfolk Raynham Hall is the historic home of the Townsend family and a place shrouded in legend and hauntings. It is arguably the most famously haunted place in the UK. In the very early 1700s, the then Viscount of Townsend, a man named Charles Townsend, married a woman named Dorothy. Dorothy was known for her beauty and was the Viscount's second wife. Unfortunately for her, because he was known for his jealousy and paranoia. He eventually accused her of adultery and before she could defend herself, she was locked away in her room and forbidden from seeing her children. There was even a funeral held for her later on, but many believed she remained locked up. The most famous ghost in Raynham Hall is the Brown Lady, known for her brown brocade gown. It is believed that she is the ghost of Dorothy, who even in death continues to be trapped within the ancient home. Supposedly, she was captured in a photo in 1936 by photographers who were trying to take a picture of the grand staircase. There are other ghosts who are also said to wander the halls. It is currently owned by Charles George Townsend, 8th Marquess of Townsend. Number 4. Kowloon, Hong Kong The Kowloon Walled City was originally a fort of the Chinese military, but over the years, locals and citizens started to move in. Extremely crowded and limited in its space, not a single inch of land was left empty within the walled city. The claustrophobic locality fell into the hands of the Chinese triad in the 60s and 70s and was known to be a hotbed for illegal gambling, prostitution, and drug trading. This place was dark, dangerous, and rife with poverty. However, the walled city provided shelter and homes from anywhere from 33,000 to 50,000 residents in 1990. Immigrants who were denied visas rented in the walled city. There were dog meat restaurants, hair parlors, doctors and dentist offices, and people would go there to get cheap care. In 1993, the Hong Kong government had a tough job evicting everyone and demolished the city. Residents were given a little monetary compensation, but they all claimed it just wasn't enough to start over. Number 3. The Whaley House, USA The Whaley House was built in the mid-1850s in the Greek Revival style. It is currently a California historical museum and is maintained by a local heritage organization. But before that, it was someone's home. It is defined by many tragic events and has been called America's most haunted house. The Whaley House was actually designated as an official haunted house by the United States in the 1960s by the U.S. Commerce Department. Once upon a time, the Whaley House was the home of a businessman named Thomas Whaley and his family. Sadly, a number of Whaley family members passed away in the home, many under unnatural circumstances. Thomas Whaley had seen the former owner of the house, Yankee Jim, be executed in public for attempted grand larceny, but he bought the house anyway. Suicide and depression paint the history of the Whaley House, and many individuals have reported seeing the ghosts of those Whaleys. There is so much history there that even non-believers will enjoy the tour. But is it a good place to live? Nope. Number 2. Manchiat Nazer, Egypt Also known as Cairo's Garbage City, Manchiat Nazer is a ward of Cairo in Egypt and a nightmare for anyone who's used to having any kind of amenities and cleanliness. It is home to around 262,050 people as of 2006. However, more recent conservative estimates put the population at 60,000, although it's hard to keep tabs. This slum city on the outskirts of Cairo is famous for being full of garbage. Its economy is powered by the collection and recycling of the rest of the city's garbage because apparently the city of Cairo never established a full-blown trash collecting service. There are streets, shops, housing quarters, and apartments in the slums of Manchiat Nasser. However, there is no water, electricity, sewers, or any kind of infrastructure. The men go off to collect the garbage from the rest of the city, bring it home, and then the women and children are in charge of sorting everything so they can make a bit of money from recycling. Trash litters the streets, roofs, and homes of the people of the slums, and it is one of the dirtiest places in the world inhabited by people. Number 1. Sealand the Principality of Sealand, or just Sealand, is a self-proclaimed micronation that hasn't been officially recognized by any other sovereign state. 
although the UK and German government have lended some credibility to the small nation's claims. Sealand is actually set up on a decommissioned sea-based military platform that the British government used during World War II. However, it has since been claimed by the Bates family, who are former citizens of the United Kingdom, depending on how you look at citizenship. The Bates family actually claims that Sealand is their own nation. However ludicrous this may sound, Sealand has been recognized as being outside British control by the United Kingdom's courts. Germany, meanwhile, has had diplomatic relations with Sealand, lending it some official standing. That said, Sealand operates in a legal gray area and has been the site of gun battles, raids, and pirate attacks. It's not really the safest place to live, but you can purchase a royal title online. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye!